I'm still Mike. He's <laughs> all good, man. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. You got to clap? Here we go. Woo! Boom. Welcome back to the Fine Moments Podcast. My name is Wong Lam, and today's special guest is my great man, Verl Tolbert. Welcome back to the podcast. Hey, brother. happy to be back. H and A. Absolutely, man. Episode number four was your episode. It was. And this is a catch up and conversation about your episode, how you're doing now. Uh, number one is how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Yeah. We uh, just did a quick recording of the national anthem. It was awesome. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, ready to kick off this weekend. Yeah, man. Good how's, times. How's Theo and uh, Nikki doing? Theo's your son. Theo, yeah, yeah. He's two years old now, running into everything. Right. He's He's got all the leg power you can give him. <laughs> We're potty training. So that's a whole nother ball game. Right on, man. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's good times. And uh, my wife, Nikki, doing doing well, you know, keeping keeping him in order and yeah. uh, keeping me in check. So Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> so it's good. I'm glad to hear that. You actually performed at my wedding the first time you came on the podcast. You were talking about how you were going to perform. And now, two years later, you actually did perform at the wedding. It was awesome, man. Oh, I had a blast yeah. at your wedding, man. You talk about a party. <laughs> oh, that was good times. Yeah. Good to see everybody. Good to see you tied the knot officially. <laughs> Had an opportunity to play for all your guests. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that I had a blast with that. They loved it, man. Every one of them loved it. <sighs> I was just so happy to be a part of that big day. That, yeah. that, was, that was special. Yeah. Super cool, man. Absolutely. The There's some questions I didn't get a chance to really focus on in the first podcast with you. And now that you're here and you're on video, uh, I. I'm interested. You you have an IT job at Chesapeake from mm -hmm. eight to six, and you're married, of course, and you have a son, and you also play the saxophone on the Dude. side, and mm -hmm. you play at weddings, you play at private events, banquets, you play at Flint on Sundays at brunch from one to two for the I next do. few months. That's right? right. That's right. So, what are some of your morning habits to kind of get you started? throughout the day and then if something goes wrong when you're trying to get those habits started how do you go about the day and fix that <laughs> i love that question so on a good day on a typical day yeah. when things don't go wrong morning habits kind of vary depending uh -huh. on the day so three days a week i hit the gym with you yeah. you keep me in order there so i'm, I'm blessed there so i'll get up probably about 4 45 in the morning mm -hmm. Later for a little bit, get up, get dressed. Uh, on a good day, I'll have everything laid out. My clothes are ready, and I get to the gym, get a good workout in Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yep. Uh, then head to work. The other days that I'm not working out, I'll get up and practice the saxophone. Yeah. Because you know, I got to make time to to practice my craft. And so on those days, uh, and any other day. One of the first things I'll do is listen to something that inspires me mm -hmm. in the morning. That might be a saxophonist that uh, I really respect, and so I'll listen to something there that uh, I'm, I'm striving to, to, to be able to play. Or I'll just listen to a podcast, you know, yeah. just listen to me some DMP or some, some Dave Ramsey right. or some... I've got this fleet of podcasts that yeah. I'll listen to Absolutely. Uh, that kind of keep me motivated mm -hmm. uh, before I kick off the morning. So it's it's kind of a mix between, you know, am I, am I getting ready to gear up to work out mm -hmm. because health is super important, uh, or am I gearing up in the morning to practice my craft? Right. You know, and it's funny because this is all happening in the a.m., especially if I'm practicing saxophone. Right. <laughs> and so right. I've got, as I mentioned earlier, a two-year-old yeah. and a wife. So if I'm practicing, I'm doing it quietly mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't wake anyone up. Um, but I'm, there's, there's a lot of creative ways to still, to still get that time in and practice. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you think about motivation? Because I feel like people get, become inspired through listening and then they, they get motivated to do something. I feel motivation, though, sometimes is, a lot of times it's short, for me included, because I, I love this podcast. I'm motivated yeah. to do this. However, there's times, man, that it's a grind. It so is. what's your thoughts on how do you gear up when 
your gears are coming down off of motivation? Yeah, that's a great question. Motivation to me, I found it's almost like it's almost like when you take a bath. So when you wake up in the morning or take a shower, most people take a shower, you don't have time for a bath. When you wake up in the morning, you take a shower, you get clean. Mm -hmm. You're clean for that day. Yeah. After you do your workout, after you do whatever you're doing the rest of that day, by the time you get back and you wake up, you're dirty again. Yeah. So the next day, you got to take another shower. Right. That's very similar to motivation to me. I got you. In the morning, like I said, I, I have to start off with something motivational. That might be some music, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some uh, inspirational music. There's some podcasts out there that are yeah. you know, just really to, to get inspired music. Yeah. Uh, music is a big one for me. I found that music can change the whole temperament of the house. Yeah. There's some times where my son is just rambunctious. And he's running around, he's tossing things, right. and you know, causing all type of ruckus. And then what I'll do is I'll turn on some music that kind of smoother. And it's funny because you'll notice that he'll kind of smooth out. Yeah. And so just different things, I, I, you know, auditory is what I'm, I'm really a fan of. You know, it doesn't have to be music; it, it can just be someone speaking calmly. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's got to be a daily routine of getting me some positivity. Right. Whether that's uh, auditory people, um, you know, I, I, I talked about earlier how we work out in the mornings yeah. on, on uh, Mondays, was Wednesdays, and Fridays. And for me, that's like gassing up every time we work out. You know, that's my it's kind of my uh, catapult to to get going. Yeah. But then by the end of the day, <laughs> I might have <laughs> lost some motivation, so that. I've got to refuel in the morning with, uh, you know, whichever mechanism I'm, I'm doing that by playing. Yeah. You know, you know, that, that's a way to, to stay motivated and, and getting out and having the opportunity to play for people. And, you know, when I, when I find it, you know, what I'm doing is helping people. You know, maybe mm -hmm. get, if they had a tough week and maybe something I play or giving them some attention while I'm performing for them, that helps them out. Yeah. That gives me an extra jolt to, to kind of keep, keep it going. Yeah. Uh, so always looking for those those ways to to, you know, to stay motivated. That, but that's a really good point. It's not a one and done. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's right. It's an ongoing thing. Yeah, you, you talk about music and motivation, and I find that very true. And I'll take it back to when I got married. After the Mr. Bennett made it official, Margaret and I were taking pictures of all these families, family mm -hmm. members, other families, and all of a sudden you're playing music. And it changed my mindset. I was I went from <laughs> pictures of like, oh, let's get these pictures done. Yeah, gotta go watch Rural. You know, that's so, funny. And listen to music. So I I agree, man. I, I feel like music is soothing. It can change your mood, and in, most of the time, I think it brings up the mood of the surroundings, right? Absolutely. Yeah. If you listen to the right stuff, and you can truly change your demeanor by what you're listening to. Yeah. What are maybe two things that you wish people would ask you, but they never do? Oof, I'm pretty open. People know a lot about me. Some things yeah. that that people know that, you know, like I'm, I'm allergic to chocolate. And, yeah. You know, I'm pretty open about that. Something, and you just asked about it, but I, some people ask me, like, man, you, you seem kind of upbeat, you know, positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they never ask how that is, or and, but you just did. And so it was a, it was a great question, because yeah. that's exactly what I do to try to stay motivated Right. And stay upbeat. Um, you know, just been doing more mindful things, like just just being quiet mm -hmm. and just kind of being thankful. You know, something I've been trying to practice a lot more. And I found that when I sit down and actually just think about why I'm grateful, you know, the things I have, you know, yeah. family, uh, so a wife, a, a healthy son, a home, a job. <laughs> yeah, a vehicle sure. to get to work, <laughs> you know. I found that the more often I'm able to sit down and do that, yeah, I have no choice but to just be like, man, I am lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so that 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 puts a smile on my face, right? Because uh, I, I understand that uh, it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm very fortunate. So uh, but that 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 question you asked earlier was one that I don't think I get asked enough. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, for folks that you feel like someone is is doing something well that you're mm -hmm. thriving for, you know, I, I think it's a great question. How, how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've often wondered that, and that's why I ask you that all the time. Yeah. It's like, how do you stay so motivated? <laughs> <laughs> Hang around motivating people. Yeah, man. If you could go back to your younger self, yeah, what would you tell yourself? Gosh, that's a good one. Probably, I would say, to really think about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And think about what you're good at. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because... For better or for worse, I think it helps to identify your passion as early as you mm -hmm. can. Because as soon as you can do that, that's how much sooner you can go that direction. Mm -hmm. It's a book called The Alchemist, and mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's, it's a great book. And it, and it um, the kind of the gist of it is, you know, what I took away is you, know, you want to go that way. Know, go towards what your passion is and kind of what you think is the yeah. direction you need to go. Right. Uh, whatever that is. Uh, and, and so that's probably something I would have told an, an, an earlier Verl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, little Verl, <laughs> you know, sit down, think, what do you like to do? What, what, what kind of, you know, what kind of get you really going? Yeah. And then focus on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that that, makes that, sense. I think that's some some good advice. Yeah, and something for sure. something that happens as you get older by default, because mm -hmm. ultimately as you get older, you just run out of time. Yeah, you, know, you just have less free time. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you have to edit out things that are just l not as important and yeah. focus on what's really important. Right. Uh, but as a younger person, if you can do it intentionally earlier, yeah. you're just that much further along, in my opinion. I like it, man. Especially using the word intentionally doing something. Yes. Right? Yeah. That's if a big one. That's a big one. Yeah. If you had to go back and change any outcome, what would that moment be and what outcome would you think it would have been? That's a tough one because every outcome is really a learning opportunity mm -hmm. and without the learnings mm -hmm. you don't really land where you are current day yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and i'm pretty happy with where i am current day right. i can't say i have any like regrets yeah you know uh, i have to admit that every time i think back even though it might have not gone the way <laughs> i would have intended right it it made me better, mm -hmm. you know, the current state, Burl. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know if I'd take anything away, uh, you know, in hindsight. Right. <laughs> Had you asked me the day after it happened, I'd be like, man, that was dumb. Yeah. Well, because that's emotional, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's all exactly. emotionally charged. And... Absolutely. I get that. But I'm in a good place. Yeah. I, I think I think it's, uh, I think you, you have to have that. You have to learn. So... Yeah, I think you're in a great place, man. I, I admire you and I adore you. That's, uh, I Thank really you. appreciate the fact that you were so open to me working out with you back in early of 2013. Yeah, because you got married in late of or uh, December 28th. Yeah, yeah, right. Yep, that's right, December 2013. Yeah, and you're this positive influence in the locker room <laughs> everywhere you went. I was like, hey, I want to get to be with this guy. I, I was glad and, you asked because. I was getting ready for the wedding. Yeah. And I remember looking at your calves like, <laughs> I need help, clearly. And when you came to me, he's like, man, we need to work out together. I said, hot dog, you are right. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> so it worked out well. Yeah. No, no, that. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. It's helped me tremendously, and I, I've just learned it. If there's anything I want to do, I need yeah. to find folks that are doing it uh, preferably preferably better than I am. Yeah. And yeah. working out was one of those things. Yeah. So, uh, still working out all these years later, and it's paying off. 
Yeah. yeah the wife is happy. <laughs> <laughs> they say happy wife, happy life, something like that. Yeah. I yeah, get that, that all the time. Man. That, that is, there's some truth there. I guess that's why I drive an 18-year-old Suburban now. <laughs> <laughs> that's called wisdom. <laughs> That car is full of wisdom, I guess. That's, hey, <laughs> hey, well, that, it works out. <laughs> oh, man. Who would be three people you would want to call on the phone or meet in person when you needed someone to speak with? Yeah. Or meet with? I'm fortunate. I've, I've got them. Definitely my wife, Nikki. Yeah. You know, she's the first to hear everything for better or for worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what she married into. Yeah. <laughs> eh, what do you get? My wife, yeah. of course, uh, my mom yeah. and my father. Yeah. Uh, my my dad in particular for like music decisions because mm-hmm. he's super passionate about music. He studied music himself wow. in college, and you know, he's just a wise guy. Yeah. For yeah sure. So it's really cool to have him. Um, my mother is. I just remember being young, thinking, man, she just knows a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, just one of the smartest people <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, my mother said something years ago, which is why I married Nikki. But one of the things my mom said is, We're VT, they call me VT at home. Yep. Like, VT, be sure that you marry someone smarter than yourself. Love it, man. <laughs> That's right. And so as soon as I met Nikki, I was like, Yep. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Need all the help I can get because I <laughs> don't always hit the mark. Yeah. But super respect, you know, their opinions quite a bit. You know, you're yeah, you know you know, you're always someone that, that's there I can bounce ideas off of. I appreciate it. Um you know, I've got I don't know, I just have lots of good people yeah. that, that I'm surrounded by. Um so yeah, I've, yeah, I've got I've got a whole <laughs> fleet of folks, mm-hmm. you know, good folks that I can yeah. I can ask for, just kind of depending on it. But yeah, yeah, they're definitely the top top group is right right yeah. around here. I love that man. You, you talk about Nikki being number one, of course, and then your your parents, two and three is. I appreciate that because it's it's the you the unity of the family itself. Yeah, that's You important. get on well with your parents, and obviously you love your wife, and that's so important, man. They have great influences on you. Mm-hmm. You have had great influences on them, you know, so. Yes, yes, it's, yes. It's super important, bro. Yeah, they, they know me well. Yeah. You know, they, they know me. They can they can call me out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm getting off course. Yeah. A couple more questions, and uh, I, I know I want to be cognizant of your time. Sure. So, when you go and perform, what is your mental prep? What's your mindset like when you go to perform? Because you bring the music, there's an audience out there, mm-hmm. and there's going to be a different audience every Sunday. Let's say at brunch. Yep. So, what's your mindset like when yeah. you, you go and prep for something like that? If I'm honest, my mindset is <laughs> it's 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 pretty much fun mm-hmm. for me. I don't overthink it. Like I said, as I'm as I'm going to the you know the play somewhere, yeah, you know I'm, I'm usually listening to you know the artist that I'm inspired by, or sometimes I'm just in silence. You know, I'm just kind of just in the moment, if mm-hmm. you will. Because to be honest, I sometimes it's hard for me to believe that like I get to play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's it's a super duper cool privilege. Yeah, to have the opportunity. To play for strangers a lot of times. Right. You know, they don't know me from anyone else. Yeah. And then I pull out my instrument and, and start playing music. And I'm just having fun, you know? And what I found is <laughs> when I'm having fun, it's contagious. Yes, it is. It is. Um, and so, therefore, you know, folks that don't know me from, <laughs> from anyone, Right. They all of a sudden start having fun, mm-hmm. and so that's really what I, what I'm really trying to do is just just have fun. You know, make it easy. You know, you used to coach soccer, <laughs> and I'm sure. You know, when it was all said and done, you know, after after the guys practice, and it was time to play, 
Yeah. You know, go have fun. Yep. You know, we we've been practicing, we've been you know doing mm -hmm. what we're doing. Go have out, go out there and have fun. So that's that's really what I try to do. And uh, the, the, the the beautiful thing is I don't have to try hard because I like to play. Yeah. I like to do it. Yeah. And so it makes it really easy. It's not work. Right. For me, and I found that it it just works out. Yeah. You know, as long as I'm having fun. Yeah. I love it, man, because the best one out there is the one having the most fun. That, that's right. right. That's right. Nate Gomez told me that. But the best surfer out there is the one having the most fun. <laughs> you can use that with anything, really. That's right. And so. That's right. Make it make it fun, however you can, yeah. with it, whatever you're doing. Yeah. What's your path forward? Yeah. That's that's one. Let's think. Kind of makes me think of high school when I was on the track and field team. Yeah. It's on the field team. I feel it. <laughs> let me not <laughs> let me not tell a fib. <laughs> because your wife Nikki's a track star. That's right. Now right. my wife is a track star, but I was just on the field. I wasn't yeah. even a star. <laughs> but while I was on the field, I remember seeing the guys that did the relay. 400 mm -hmm. meter relay, and you know I went to a Booker T. Washington in Tulsa, I mean, well known for athletes. Mm -hmm. Some guys were really fast, but I remember in practice one of the things that they always practiced was the handoff mm -hmm. of the baton, and they would just kind of stand um, equal length apart and just hand the baton off to yeah. the next person. And, and just over and over again, hand it off, because that was a very important part of the relay, obviously. I mean, it's one thing to run, but you got to really hand that baton off to the mm -hmm. next guy uh, to actually win the race. So when you say path forward, uh, it just kind of makes me think of you know, my parents, you know, what they've, how far they've brought the family. Right. Handing the baton to me, if you will. Yeah. I've got to do my part. I've got to run as hard as I can. Yeah. You know, to really be the best father I can, to be a good example mm -hmm. for my two year old. Yeah. You know, to be a good um, a good husband. Mm -hmm. And just do my part, if you will. Yeah. So that I can eventually hand off the baton. To my, my little guy, yeah, and whatever yeah. other family it, it happens, yeah, and so you know that that's really the path forward. Is what yeah. what can I do to uh, to make sure I'm doing my part, yeah. so that the you know the team can can finish the race strong. I love it, man. I love it. So you're just telling me that basically there's not a finish line. You just keep going forward. Keep that's going right. Forward, keep going that's forward. right. It, it, it's it's a legacy discussion. Yeah. You know, it yeah. doesn't stop here and it doesn't end here. <laughs> right, right. Didn't start here and it doesn't end here. So, man, uh, just doing my part. Yeah. I think, you know, yeah, to, you know, man, I appreciate you so much. You, you always take time out of your day, not just for me. You take time out of your day for a, a lot of people around you, man. And the music that you bring, the body language that you have when you're playing. It's amazing the way you treat Theo and Nikki. It's amazing the way you talk Thank about you. your parents. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. It, thank man. you. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot in common in that way. So <laughs> I, I, think, I think that might be why we hang. <laughs> right on, man. How do people get in touch with you once again if they want to reach out to you for saxophone performances or just to ask you questions more about yourself? Absolutely. So I can be reached. I've got uh, my website. It's uh, Burl T dot com that's http colon forward slash forward slash verl v e a r l t dot com i'm also hanging out on instagram you can see some posts of me playing i'm on twitter yep. at verl <laughs> and i'm just all around the place facebook yeah. um just just verl just type in verl <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things about having a name like verl v e a r l it it's not hard to find me yeah uh, but reach out, any questions, I'm, I'm always open, right. uh, always excited when I play somewhere and, you know, uh, a 10-year-old or whatever, or 
a family will bring their <laughs> their kid up like, man. Yeah, I've know, seen that. We happen. just got a saxophone player. He he just right. got a saxophone, and we're you know, we're excited to hear you play. And so I'm I'm super. I get super psyched. Yeah. When, when there's other you know young people looking to learn Absolutely. learn an instrument. So if you got questions, reach out. I am. I'm here for the world, man. Dude, you bring Can't it every wait. time, brother. Hey, thank you, you thank you, thank you. you. Hey, thank you, H&A. Yeah, man. DMP! <laughs> 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 All right, that's it. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> oh, man. What if I didn't record that? <laughs>